What's up guys, this video is going to be a little different than what I usually post, but I've just had a strong urge to make this video for you because I've seen a ton of guys mess their lives up and make crazy life decisions and crazy financial decisions. And I just can't help but think, if only someone was there to tell them before it was too late. This video is especially for the men and I'm speaking from a place of knowledge. I'm not telling you what I think or how I feel about this. I'm telling you what I know. And this video is going to hit some of you guys pretty hard. But just remember, the purpose of this video is to help you out and to wake you up. If you're new to the channel, my name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms. And I'm bringing my own perspective by sharing my experiences to serve as motivation to you. Let's get into this video. All right, bro, so I'm going to start this off with a story. I remember back when I was in high school, and I just remember getting lectured all the time by my parents, mainly my dad. And I would get lectured about the decisions that I was making. And it would be about things that I just thought were irrelevant, like the amount of time I spent playing video games or hanging out with friends. And it seemed like anything I decided to do that included enjoying myself was what I got lectured about. Fast forward to now and I realized there were a bunch of hidden gems in those annoying, heart-wrenching lectures. And I'll tell you why. I went throughout my high school career being the good kid, the quiet kid, you know, the guy who always did what was supposed to be done. So my entire high school experience was extremely boring. And even though I had a good amount of friends and I was in extracurricular activities and stuff like that, I could not wait to get out of there because I was bored and I was getting fed up with the people around me. And I really didn't understand what I was capable of when I was in high school because my potential was limited by the thinking of those around me. But the other guys, oh, they were on a whole nother level. They were doing great. I mean, these guys were seriously on top of the world. They got all the girls. They were killing it in football and basketball. They were getting acceptance letters to their favorite college way before I was. And they were considered cool amongst everybody. And I was just Reggie. You know what I mean? The only thing I was good at was math, playing the drums, and lifting weights. That was it. And I, I was cool with that. But these guys were almost seen as celebrities. Like there was nothing they could do wrong. All the girls wanted them. All the guys wanted to be around them. They were on top of the world. They had street cred and they all thought they'd be playing sports professionally. In other words, they hit their peak in high school. They got to get into parties that no high schooler should ever be able to get into. They were drinking, smoking weed, sleeping with a bunch of girls from the school, then bragging about it the next day. Some of them were even into gang activity, you know. They got a thrill out of this stuff. You know what it's like to be young and invincible, right, bro? I'll tell you what. A lot of those guys I went to high school with ruined their lives. Remember when I told you they hit their peak when they were in high school? Well, once they peaked, everything stopped. Bro, have you ever seen someone you went to high school with, but all they ever talk about is the glory days from high school? I do, bro, and I'm like, yo, you 26. Slow down some. I mean, it gets ridiculous, bro. I remember hearing them reminisce about how they used to cut up in Miss Simmons' class, or how they used to be a beast in high school, or how they got all the girls. I never understood how people just do that, reminisce about stuff that happened daggone 10 years ago. I live in the present, not the past. But it's because for them, those were the best days of their lives. And for a lot of them, that's all they have to remember that's positive. And it's for that reason they hit their peak when they were in high school. And I just remember as I progressed beyond high school and I started to go through college and I would go home and visit for the holidays and whatnot. I just remember seeing a lot of guys with potential. I mean strong potential. Just give it all up become stagnant, lazy, and not do anything at all. I watched friends and acquaintances ruin their lives. I'm talking guys who were top of the line in high school. Just imagine being on your way to becoming a doctor. You're good at math, you're good at science, you're good at sports. You have pretty much anything you could want. You hit the jackpot when it comes to talent and intelligence. But then you start drinking way before the age of 21. And, you know, that doesn't seem like it's that bad because a lot of people do that. Even I did that before I was over 21. But no, you don't stop there. You want to try drugs, so you try weed. You know what I'm saying? Because you just felt daring one night. I don't know, maybe your girlfriend talked you into it and you like it. And that's the gateway drug, so now you're bored with that. Now you want to try something a little stronger. And the next thing you know, you're on another planet. Just having a good old time, floating, 
laughing, just having a ball. Then when you finally come down from what seems like a blissful moment, you get off the spaceship and you go on home. And when you get home, you go to your room and you go to sleep. Then when you wake up, years have gone by, you're 27 years old, still living with your mom. Got a wee bowl next to you. First thing you do when you wake up every morning is wake and bake. And your trifling self has your girlfriend with you doing it too. This is a real person, by the way. And he actually used to be a very close friend of mine. And every time I see him, I get a little more disappointed. And I just can't help but think, if only someone was harder on him. If only someone kept him on track. He went from acing college level classes in high school to getting kicked out of college and locked up for selling drugs in the parking lot. This man could have been almost finished with med school by now on his way to making well into the six figures. But he says all he wants to do is eat good food and sell drugs. And see, that's where the lectures came in. When I wanted to go out or hang out with friends, it was no, stay your butt at home. I remember once I wanted to hang out with female friends one time and they got nipped in the bud real quick. Now I ain't trying to have no grandbabies. I got lectured so much, man. I felt like I was in jail. I was like, man, like, I do the right thing, I get good grades, I'm even on the drum line and I do martial arts on the side. And I'm doing that all while juggling schoolwork around it and I can't even have a social life. Boy, you see them in school. And now that I think of it, so was the guy I was just telling you about. He was doing all the right things at first, he was making the good grades, he was absolutely killing it in everything he did. He was actually one of the top students and he was involved with so many other things. You know what I'm saying? So now that lecture makes sense because there is nothing I hate more than watching a young man waste all of his potential on some BS. See, the biggest financial mistakes are the ones that don't even seem financial. You know how many guys I saw get girls pregnant before we even graduated high school? Now you're 20 years old with four baby mamas and you're proud of that. You might even brag about it. The guys were acting like that stuff was cool. That's not what I call it. I call stuff for what it is. And that is sad, bro. Because when your relationship doesn't work out with these women you decided to have babies with, who you don't love, by the way, you got to figure out how you're going to pay child support. This is what I grew up seeing, bro. Now you have no skills, no certification, no ambition, and four kids with four different women. And you're sitting back at the house thinking life owes you something. Bro, nobody told you to do what you did. You just acted on what you wanted to do. And now you got to face the consequences. Nowadays, it's hard enough to live on your own, financially provide for yourself while also living a healthy lifestyle, being good at what you do for work, and keeping a social life. Now add kids on top of that. You're looking sick, bro. And as a man, nobody is going to come save you. So when I hear these guys bask in the glory days, I don't want to hear it. Nobody cares that you were a top athlete or you were a beast in the gym when you were in high school because you're flabby now. See, we just, we don't talk about this stuff enough. As a man, you have no excuses. You own absolutely every single decision that you make, so you also own the consequences. Case in point, I'll never forget this, man. One night, a group of guys went out to the state fair, and while they were there, shots were fired. A stray bullet hit and killed one of the guys. It was gang-related. The decision to be about that life, the decision to be cool, the decision to act tough while also breaking curfew to hang out with the boys on a school night, got one of the boys killed. Had all of them in tears. Had all of them fearing for their life. This is real life, bro. This is not a game. Guys wanna play around, sleep around, fight, act a fool. They wanna do all of this until they get fired from their job or kicked out of school. They do this until they get a girl pregnant or in some cases, multiple girls pregnant or until they get addicted to drugs or knocked out in a fight. It's all fun and games until someone gets killed. Then wanna talk about how life is hard. Now I have a question. How do you tell two loving parents that their son was killed by a gunshot wound due to gang violence? Then how do you tell them that he was involved with this activity? Then the autopsy report reveals that there's liquor and weed in the system. Very hard to explain to the parents of a 16 year old kid. Now they gotta figure out how to pay for his funeral on top of all that. And the ironic thing about that is, I remember a few years back when someone I really respect said, you know, you're born looking like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. And that has so much depth to it because there's so many guys out here who are dead and don't even realize it. 
I know because I was there. I mean, sure, physically, I knew I was alive, but as far as everything else, I was just on autopilot, just going through the motions, going through life, directionless, feeling stuck, feeling sorry for myself, not having a purpose, just dead inside. The only purpose I knew was going to work and going home, and that was it. That's how a lot of men are, just going through the motions, doing what they have to do to get the bare minimum out of there just so they can get by. A lot of you aren't making the amount of money you feel like you should be making, but you're not doing anything about it. Instead, what happens is you give in to your circumstances, or you do try to do something about it, but then you get absorbed or swayed by someone else's thoughts and ideas of what life should be like, you're letting other people's opinions completely deter you from where you were going. And when you hang around certain people, you start to pick up their habits. And if you're living a life that lacks direction or guidance, best believe someone's going to come along and redirect you. And that could either be a good or a bad thing. But I'm not the type of person that would accept that kind of risk, which is why I have to be in control of which direction my life is going. No one else. So I cut off a lot of people I used to hang around. And this might be something that you feel extremely uncomfortable doing because you feel like you might have such a tight bond and you've known this person for years and you have so much, you've been through a lot together. But one thing about it is you can't think about it that way. As life goes on, you grow as a man. And if others around you aren't also growing, what happens? You outgrow them. You can even tell because when you spend time with them, you end up talking about two completely different things. Y'all don't even vibe anymore. You just feel like two strangers who just so happen to know each other for five years. I'm speaking from experience, bro. I want you to remember this number. Five. That's your circle. You were the average of those five people. And something that's consistent across the board with these five people are their decisions. If you have people in your circle who like to read and live a healthy lifestyle, if you're hanging around people who want more for themselves, they like to invest their money and they have good relationships, what do you think is going to happen? You're all going to grow together if you're always talking about succeeding and making more money and paying off debt and making something of yourself, then why in the world are you hanging around dudes who do nothing but drink, smoke, and sleep with random girls all day? Forget about impressing people. Forget about maintaining friendships that don't contribute to your growth because you know what's going to happen? I can tell you what happened to me. I remember being called lame for wanting to better myself. You know what I'm saying? They cracked a few jokes, made fun of me a little bit just because I like to read. For whatever reason, I've even been told that what I'm trying to accomplish isn't possible for me to obtain by people I thought were there for me. But the thing about me is I don't care. I don't care what anyone has to say. I'm going to do what I do regardless. And then I'll be there to tell them later, I told you so. But I won't say it verbally. I'll say it with this look. Because I've had way too many moments in my life where I've doubted myself. And I know what I personally had to do to get over that. So I definitely don't have time for anyone else who wants to doubt me. Bro, this affects your earning potential. This affects your thought patterns. And it can cause you to give up on your goals before you even get started. The number five. Always remember that, bro. If you're not congruent with the five people you spend most of your time with, I strongly encourage you to assess your circle, bro. Now here's something I wish someone would have explicitly told me because I actually just learned this recently. Knowing that no one is going to save you and knowing that you own every single decision in your life, you also have to know that you need to understand what makes you happy and what you're willing and not willing to accept in life because there's going to be things that you go through that test you. These things test you as a man. They test your character, your courage. They test what you're about. For you, this test might be work or it might be a bad relationship or just back to back things that happen to you that feel like they're not fair and you feel like a victim because of it. For me, it was working super hard as a straight A college student so that I could land a decent paying job only to step into the corporate world knowing nothing. Not knowing anything about business, stepping into a Fortune 500 company as a manager, not having led a single person in my life and falling flat on my face then going through a breakup while trying to improve at my job despite all of the distractions going on, have my ex blowing my phone up, and then on the other hand, I have deaths in the family, and there were even deaths in the company, which made me had to work even more. I was working 12 plus hours a day, seven days a week for several months at a time, burning out, oh, and almost getting fired. And to top it all off, I absolutely hated my job. 
I didn't have a social life and I didn't have any guidance whatsoever despite my constant asking for it, despite praying for it, despite seeking it. I didn't get any guidance. That made me want to give up and I felt like a victim. And that might not sound like a lot to you. Like you might hear that and be like, man, you didn't really go through anything. And that's fine. That's fine. But to me, my entire world was upside down. But that was when I took control. I found a mentor, I learned how business works, and I figured out how to become proficient within my role. And when I got good at what I was doing at work, I started showing out. And I started performing at a very high level. And then when I got fed up with that place, I left with a bang because when I left, they knew they were losing a very valuable asset that has a specialized set of skills that will take years to attain. And from there, I took a chance. I moved across the country and that was the best decision I've ever made. And that was a decision that never would have otherwise crossed my mind. That decision has led to more happiness, freedom, and money into my life. And while I was preparing to move across the country, I had an entire month to think about this. That was when I decided. I decided that I would not be victimized ever again. I decided that I would take control of any situation I'm ever in and I will come out on top because if no one is really going to come and save me, that means I have to save myself. And the way you save yourself is by making the right decision. The right decision for me was staying focused, staying in the gym, staying positive, staying persistent. Deciding not to give up no matter how bad or hopeless the situation seemed. It's not over till it's over, bro. The right decision was to keep learning and growing. It's about improving every day and learning from your mistakes. I could have quit. I could have quit the first moment things got hard at that job. I could have just walked out of there without having any other options. See, but then I'd be in the situation. Or I could have victimized myself so bad to the point that I just didn't put any more effort in, which by the way, would have gotten me fired. Because remember, I was on the way to getting fired I could have just let my circumstances eat me alive, but instead I came to a realization. And my realization was this, I decided to work here. I put the application in, I interviewed, now I'm in here. This was my decision. And since I decided to work here, I have to deal with whatever crap that comes with this job. And I can either adapt to this or I just won't have a job. That breakup I was going through, I had to realize, hey, I chose to be with her at the time, so I have to deal with the consequences. I have to deal with the aftermath and the breakup and all this stuff. And you know what? Making the decision to take control of any negative situation is what led to my success in the most hopeless of situations. Remember, bro, you have way too much on your plate to fold under the pressure of the negativity that's going on in your life right now. And you have way too much to accomplish to be blinded by the expectations and opinions of others. Lastly, you have way too much potential to be slowing your life down with bad decisions. I hope this video spoke to you, bro, because I enjoyed making it for you. And if something from this video hit home for you, I want you to leave a comment down below. Us men need to have more conversations like this so we can break generational curses, so we can actually build wealth and make something great of ourselves. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.